There's been mud on my soul. There's been anger inside me. There's still unforgiven deeds that now it's time to free. I've been trapped inside so long. Don't remember how to live. How much of life has passed me by as I slept inside my dreams? Oh yes, sip the waters too. Let them wash all over you. to break so none of the other kids can use them amen the child is saying to god that put me to sleep and keep my soul but if i die in sleep let all my toys get destroyed so that after my death no one should use them. That is the poem of a selfish child. There are three things. One is need. Second is desire, and third is greed. Need is something which is necessary. Another is want. want and desire are similar one is need then you desire something intense desire you want it and then greed they jokingly say that to get married is a desire but to stay happy after marriage is greed the vices are many in one of his poems kabir says i removed the ribbon and the garment remained i removed the garment and the body remained i kept on removing one vice after another and yet like the pearls of fields of onion onion something remains i remove lust anger remains i remove <coughs> anger greed remains i remove greed attachment remains i remove attachment ego remains o oh lord tell me how should i meet you the layers are uncountable the vices are difficult difficult to surmount the journey seems arduous the vices are, are at times invincible 
how to win them, how to remove them. It's a big journey. But before we think of removing vices, the most important thing is to identify them. Diagnosis is more important than treatment. In the medical field, first there is diagnosis and then the treatment starts. In the spiritual field, diagnosis, it will be exam generation to say that diagnosis is treatment but yes it is so the moment you diagnose something your spirit rebels you don't want to stay with it because you know it is not a part of you it is something of inferior quality how can you stay with it but then you never diagnose or rather our diagnosis is wrong misdiagnosis and that way that's why the disease has become chronic if we can come to a proper diagnosis correct diagnosis rule out all other diseases and yes you come to the diagnosis this is anger this is not necessity what i am having is just the manifestation of anger this is not requirement this is not necessity and if it is really anger then i become a vicious person and how can i tolerate how can i stand this title of being called a vicious person so immediately rebel a rebellion takes place and you reject it so diagnosis is more important diagnosis of vices it's a very deep journey it's not so easy mind has to remain have become crystal clear to know things as they are So today we will see something about King Midas. We often heard the golden touch of Midas. The story part is debatable, controversial. Lot of discrepancies in description. There are three different types of Midas kings which are dis- who are described. Phrygian king, we really do not know. whether such a man really did exist or not but yes in murli we have heard this sometimes it has come once or twice about the story of king midas there are different versions one of the simple simplest version is that he was a very greedy king he wanted more and more and one day a fairy came somebody says he for 10 days and 10 nights he served one person who was the attendant or some relative of one greek deity it's a greek story greek mythology so that deity got happy some people say fairy and they asked midas that fairy asked what do you want he says that whatever i touch should turn into gold be it so he is overjoyed he is so happy he wants to test it he goes and touches stones and they turn into gold and he is so happy he goes into the garden and starts touching every flower every flower turns into garden depending upon uh, based on this story there is yet another story by one author the chocolate touch children story where a small child is there whatever touches his lips turns into chocolate so that's another book 1953 the talk the chocolate touch so this is midas touch so midas is so happy he thinks of increasing he thinks of turning everything into gold and how happy how rich he should he would become then he feels hungry he orders for food and the food comes 
He touches the plate. The plate turns into gold. He touches the food. The food turns into gold. He is thirsty. He touches the glass. The glass turns into gold. His daughter is angry with him because the flowers are no more having any incense, any uh, fragrance. So she comes running to him, crying, and he says, "What happened to you? Why you are crying?" And he touches her, and she turns into gold. Now he's so miserable, pathetic situation. So he calls that fairy. or that date in some stories back he says take away this i don't want so the date he says okay go and wash your hands in one particular river i know there is name of one river what is that is a river pactolo pactolus river so go and wash your hands so he goes and washes his hand and the power is gone and this is that even to this day this river pactolus is rich in gold it's because of this story so nobody knows the truth so he is happy again so what is the moral of the story it's a moral science story so what have you learned every story when you read you should have some lessons you know to what is the beauty of stories you always learn so keep on reading children's stories and think what i can learn so there is a deep philosophy hidden here you have a short story and you learn from that story so when you form this habit you also form the habit of turning your life into stories what happened yesterday was a story what happened the day before was a story what happened in life is a story every event of this drama is a scene is a story so when you have that event it you it's a small story so from every story you should have conclusions what i have learned you have spent 4 hours at airport for example so what is the lesson this is a very beautiful thing to learn whatever that is happening take it as a story a drama within the drama a story inside a big story so life is a web of stories there are so many stories yesterday's amrit vela was a story yesterday's murli was a story whatever that happened after murli was a story what you have learned from it yesterday's whatever you did from 9 to 12 was a story from 12 to 3 was a story from 3 to 6 was a story everything is a story every duty which you have done every seva which you have performed is a story every food that you have eaten is also a story the food is teaching you something the food is bringing out your greed the way your attitude everything teaches so that's why in india you have seen panchatantra what is it the children's story in the western world isap's fable what are they all the isap's fable they are very famous fables all isap's fable what are they they are stories small stories and what have they done in those stories they have taken help of animals a lion a jackal a goat an elephant and they talk they talk but they teach something so what is the moral of the story mida story what do you learn don't be greedy okay that's a good story that's a good lesson but how there are four types of hunger hunger bhook four types first 
physical second emotional third intellectual and fourth spiritual you must understand the nature of hunger how it happens how it works how hunger is so powerful when you are hunger and if you don't get anything person may eat anything cockroach ants anything man has gone to any level hunger is so powerful extremely powerful thing physical hunger are again divided into two parts food and lust they work similarly food and lust they are very similar same cravings same intensity lust is very very high but food is also no less those who have done prolonged fastings they must have understood and recovered discovered that so physical hunger by gradually understanding the hunger you become stronger you get to know who you are what you are emotional hunger each one of us wants love we have everything but if you don't have love you feel very very deserted lonely you have everything but if there is none to love life is barren intellectual hunger we want to know explore things know the detail of things and last spiritual hunger in spite of the fact that instead of the you have got everything in life yet you there is a vacuum a spiritual vacuum remains that remains unless and until that spiritual thirst is quaffed that spiritual thirst is quenched but greed is something else greed is you have and you want more you have enough and yet you want more but you must know this classification of hunger gradually you understand your hunger and you outgrow your hunger you go beyond your hunger those who have conquered physical hunger they gradually conquer emotional hunger intellectual hunger also spiritual hunger we give least importance to physical hunger whenever we hungry we just eat simple we are hungry we eat 10 times you are hungry 10 times you eat you never understand the relationship of food and mind if you can understand this one relationship the path of spirituality would become entirely different entirely easy so hunger how hunger works and many of the times it is not true hunger there are two types of hunger true hunger and false hunger true hunger means body needs false hunger means emotional eating you don't need but emotionally you are disturbed so you want to eat it's a habit most of the time more often than not it is all hunger always we are never hungry in fact if people can go without food for 40 days or sometimes whole life and yet stay fit most of the time it is false hunger whenever hunger happens just observe yourself who is hungry stomach hand legs chest what gradually you will wait don't start eating when you are hungry observe your hunger observe it as a detached observer and you will know that it disappears it will go away it will go away it is temporary anitya it will not stay for long time so most of the time you will know it is false it is not true one so always study your self your body your mind 
because body and soul they are very intricately connected with each other this is soul and this is body they are not two different compartments yes in the higher stages of consciousness they are but it is as if the if soul soul body is the shadow of soul and soul is the extension of body body is the shadow of soul and soul is the extension of body they are as if one unit you prick and the soul is pricked you have a pain in the body and the soul feels the pain yes but in the higher stages of consciousness the more and more soul conscious you become you start developing detachment from body that's different but most of the time if the soul is in pain body suffers psychosomatic illnesses so know this hunger is to understand hunger is important what exactly is hunger physical hunger emotional hunger emotional intellectual social hunger financial hunger economical hunger there so many hungers so baba says don't be greedy so what is the moral of the story don't be greedy but how know what is true need do i really need this most of the time we don't need things but whenever we see something new we just want to it and what we do with it we keep it and we don't use it but we need it but the moment you see it is with somebody else that's why you want it so you should have that that generates greed other thing is do i really need it so first analysis is analysis of need one second develop the sense of generosity in giving we receive the more we give the more we receive to be generous greed is contraction of heart generosity is expansion of heart and every contraction is death and every expansion is life the more i ho- want to hold things holding nature i am sorrowful i am fearful in holding there is a fear of losing but in giving there is no fear so greed is a state of fear greed is the state of very fluctuating mind there are appeals in greed but the moment you decide to give something away you are happy so make a mental survey of the things that you have with you in your room mental survey of the things you are having in your fridge mental survey of the, your kitchen mental survey of your cupboards what are the things you are having there and you will find that there are so many things which are unnecessary which i don't need 80% things <laughs> is too much okay but many things are there which are extra you are just holding them the depends upon prioritization what i give priority to the moment i realize the higher consciousness all the things that bring me down all the things that ground me to this earth they become meaningless they become useless i don't need them anymore anymore i just want to give them away and there is a joy in giving and in giving you receive that is another thing god is the ocean of generosity udhar charita naam tu is udhar in generosity in magnanimous heart the things flow in in contracted heart things die out so to develop that magnanimity of heart that generosity of heart is the goal so the more magnanimous you become more generous more candid you become life changes for good so baba says what another things be like this what do you learn from this midas story you don't have to be greedy because 
you are going to get something higher in future. Give up the lower and the higher is waiting for you. Unless and until you give this lower, you cannot get this. Things of this world are petty, they are trivial. What you are going to get is much, much higher than what you what is there in this world. Give up and you get the higher. Enjoy the things of this world by giving up the things of this world. Tena tatvena bhagnita. Scriptures, Upanishads say, how do you enjoy? Chocolate? Give up chocolate and then enjoy. Give up the things of the world and you enjoy the things of the world. So give up the lower and the higher comes to you. So this greed, this avarice contracts the heart. So give. In giving you receive blessings. So give. Expand. Be generous. And then the real Midas touch will happen. Whatever you touch will turn into spiritual. That is in fact the real Midas touch. Whichever place you go, that place will become electric. You will have that electrifying, that magnetizing effect on situations. Whatever you speak, those that speech becomes charismatic. Spiritual Midas. <laughs> So become spiritual midas. You touch things and the things should turn spiritual. You touch books and the books should turn spiritual. You touch situations, you touch hearts, you touch beings, you touch souls and the souls touch spiritual. Spiritual means they get filled with divine light, divine love and divine might. Divine light, might and love. Try power. Om Shanti.